one of the most famous cathedrals in the world, Notre Dame de Paris. Construction began in 1163 and ended 182 years later in 1345, which is understandable by the sheer amount of detail you can find just about everywhere you look. Unfortunately, Parisians haven't been very kind with the place. It was damaged during the Huguenot riots of 1548, plundered during the French Revolution in 1793, and almost burnt down in 1871. The cathedral was in such a state of disrepair at the beginning of the 19th century that city planners actually considered tearing it down. Victor Hugo wrote his novel Notre Dame de Paris, also known as The Hunchback of Notre Dame, in an attempt to bring attention to the cathedral's sorry state and help save it. And it's a good thing he did. The cathedral is an impressive example of Gothic religious architecture with its floorings, paintings, wood carvings, tiny benches, and huge stained glass windows. You might even want to consider bringing a set of binoculars so you can get a closer look at the windows. All right, enough with the loud organ music. Let's go to a more quiet place. Le Musée de l'Orangerie, one of Paris's famous art galleries. On the main floor, you'll find two huge oval rooms containing only eight of Claude Monet's 250 huge La Nymphia oil paintings. At first, I thought his choice of colors was a bit unusual. Then I learned he suffered from cataracts and had the lens from his right eye removed. This allowed him to see ultraviolet light, altering his perception of colors. On the lower floor, you'll find the Jean Walter and Paul Guillaume collection of Impressionist and Post-Impressionist paintings featuring works by Cézanne, Matisse, Monet, Picasso, Renoir and Rousseau, just to name a few. The collection was amassed at the beginning of the 20th century by Paul Guillaume, art collector and huge supporter of avant-garde art. The collection was acquired by the French state in 1959 and 1963 and eventually found a permanent home at the Orangerie. Now you might think it's not a very big art gallery, but when you realize this was one man's private collection, you can't help but be moved by the beauty and variation in style found in this single collection. Regrettably, Paul Guillaume died in 1934 at the age of 42. But in his short life, his support of the artistic community has resulted in the creation of magnificent masterpieces which are still admired many years after his passing. The Orangerie, however, was only an appetizer, because just across the river, is the Musée d'Orsay located in a converted railway station. 
and while I was deeply moved by the paintings at the Orangerie, the Musée d'Orsay was about to give me a feeling of pure joy the likes I've never experienced in my entire life. Cézanne, Pissarro, Monet, Van Gogh, Caillebot, Signac, Renoir, Degas, Claudel, Gauguin, Mayol. So many masterpieces by so many of the greatest artists the world has ever known, all under a single roof. Even the museum itself is a work of art. Coming up, it's time to go home. 